everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconer video. Today's video, I am going to be talking about the principle of acclimation, which is something very good to keep in our mind while we're training the animals that we work with. Uh, but before I jump into it, uh, if you haven't already, if you could please hit subscribe, it definitely helps me keep this channel up and going. I appreciate all your support. So many people have been so helpful and generous in every way in keeping this program going, and I want to keep it going for a long time. So uh, if you could subscribe, let me know down in the comments what you'd like to know more about and share your experiences with the community, because I love that we are a worldwide falconry group here. Well, the principle of acclimation. Uh, I'm a falconer, have been for years, but I'm also a wildlife educator by trade. Uh, that's what I do for a living. So I work with a lot of animals, not just birds of prey. I work with reptiles and parrots and hornbills and llamas and kookaburras and just all kinds of crazy things. And I love doing that, but I also love, sometimes when we are learning, you, you, you know something over here, okay? You read about it, you know it, okay? But then when you have something else to compare it to, you're like, oh, and it totally unlocks what you already knew over here in a new way. And, it, and that has been my case with working with vertebrate life forms to be able to see what, what we train. You know, I grew up in this era where they're like, animals are just dumb. They're just, they have no emotions. They don't think. That's when I was a little kid. That's what was being taught in elementary school. I'm like, what? It's like, you ever seen a dog excited to have you come home wagging its tail? It's happy. It's excited. You ever see a dog sad that, you know, because you're gone or because you took it, you, it got into something that shouldn't you take it away? It's like, roar. I mean, you, you, we see emotion, fear, happiness, excitement, uh, sorrow, loss. We see these emotions. Animals are complex and we're just barely in science learning the depth of how far it goes, how similar it is and how different it is. But again, I like to see those differences in my work and with the different animals I work with. And one principle that definitely applies but is usually ignored with falconry is the principle of acclimation. Because you see, Falconry has a rich history, not in my country, you know, it's like a hundred years or whatever at best, but most countries of the world have a rich, rich, far reaching history of falconry with traditions that work, traditions of equipment, traditions of handling and husbandry, of housing, of training, of food, of, of medical attention, all these things, they have history and they work. But if something works, we're kind of like, if it's don't broken, don't fix it. That's kind of the attitude. And but you got to understand, you are a falconer with a brain that reads. You can read a book. You can read a website. You can watch my goofy videos on here and learn something. And when you do, you're building this, this, this repertoire of knowledge. And the more you practice falconry, every bird you have, you gain new experience. You get a new bird, they have none of that. They are a wild bird and you need to understand that. You, you need to like switch your brain and think they just transitioned through a portal of causality, so to speak. They were in this world of dog eat dog, bird eat bird, where it's like, what are my reactions? Fight or flight. If something's coming after me, I'm going to fight it or I'm going to fly away from it. Those are kind of my options. Uh, my food, if I catch something, I'm mantling over it and it's not mine until I've digested it. And even then something else might try to kill me. I have a territory. I have to defend it. I have to mate. I have a mate that I have, I have to defend that mate. Somebody else is gonna try to steal my mate. I have a nest, some other raptor might try to kick me out and take over my nest or a raven pair or something, who knows? That is this mindset they're in. They have never heard of falconry. They have not read North American falconry and hunting hawks. They have not seen the Ben Woodruff YouTube channel. They haven't, they're a wild bird. They are locked in to the cycle of life and death of the circle of life, kill or be killed. Without death, there is no life. You're like you, you could be like, I've got, here's my trained red-tailed hawk. And oh, look out there. There's a wild red-tailed hawk on a pole I just drove past. To you, they're just red tails. They're different birds having incredibly different experiences radically different experiences and it's important to understand that now what my point is is having worked with a wider range of animals where it is more culturally normal to uh, to utilize the principle of acclimation i think we barely dip our toes into it with falconry not all falconers but 
we don't talk about it in the way I'm talking about it. We're just like, well, train your bird according to these principles. Hey, you're getting the results you got. Good. Fine. Uh, we don't go deeper. So what I mean, for example, let's say you train a bird, you spend time with it, you trap a red-tailed hawk. You're working with it every day. You're training it. You man it. So it's, you know, if it hops, it's going to get back up on the fist. You train it to, you know, hop, eat off your fist, hop to your fist, fly to your fist, fly to your fist outside, free fly. And you're like, okay, cool. And every day you put it back in your mew. And then you take it out when it's time to go fly. And all right, now we're going to introduce quarry. We're going to teach you how to hunt and then put you back in your mew. And that's kind of the extent of it. What you don't understand is the ability for a raptor to acclimate to the most ridiculous human things is far further and grander than most falconers realize. Now, the only video I can think of that I've really addressed one, 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 one facet of this is my spiral and stomp video where I talk about, you know, hey, a bird on a kill or even on a lure is mantling. They're like hiding their prey from any potential theft flying overhead. And that is an instance where your bird might, as you approach, instinct might click in and they're like, <laughs> and they go fly off with their prey. And you're like, oh, I got to chase after them. And I'm like, I learned early on, oh, that's stupid. They can learn to get used to you. So I have a whole video. In fact, I'll put a link to it um, in, in down in the description, the Spiral and Stomp. But just a simple principle of how you can acclimate them to the point where I hop over my birds. I literally jump over them while they're on the kill and I stomp really loudly around them. And there's a whole process to get them to that point. But step by step, you get them where they're rock solid, where nothing's going to bump them. You could have tigers and tutus dancing around with rattlesnakes in their hands and they're like i don't care i know i'm safe they're they're fine they're fine but they're capable of that and we don't think about it because like well this bird's this bird's a little spooky it's like work with it so what you have to understand is their capacity is greater and to to acclimate to a life with humanity and they don't show it in ways we're used to seeing and maybe that's why we don't recognize it when we see parrots uh, you know, a parrot can talk, a parrot can cuddle, a parrot loves to be ooh, manhandled, and like, oh, scruffle my feathers. They're loving all that. And so we can recognize that. A dog, rawr, rawr, rawr. Uh, I've had uh, several friends who have done professional wolf training and seeing what they've done in the levels of acclimation. And that's a very wild animal like a raptor, but still how much they can acclimate and get them used to things. They are so more capable of things than we realize. The problem with this particular video is I don't, the video would be way too long to go through every different kind of weird training thing I have done to utilize acclimation or to just brainstorm all the ways we could. But one of the things is we should spend more time, well, I shouldn't say should, I, I, let, let me pause too. There's a million ways to skin a cat, is how the saying goes, right? There's a lot of ways to have success as a falconer. And again, I have falconer friends that are the highest caliber falconers I know that prefer a bird with a very wild edge. They do not want them, intentionally do not want them to be overly social. And you know what? And they're tearing it up and having great success. And so that is fine. So I, I just paused myself because I said should. And should implies that there's one way and it's the right way. And that is not the case, okay? But what, I, what I'm trying to advocate is if you would like to, and if it suits the way you would like to train, that try to have as much social time with your bird as possible that doesn't relate directly to food, that doesn't relate directly to hunting. I love to have my birds in my house as, and in my space as much as possible. I want to, them to experience anything weird, any weird light phenomenon from a TV to walking in a building with a chandelier. And I'm not like going around strutting with a bird in buildings. I'm not saying that. Like I've been at shows where they had a chandelier and okay, that's reflecting light in a strange way. They see a different perspective than we do. I want them to see that kind of thing. I want them to see loud noises and get used to them and not not be fearful of them. We've all seen hawks perched on phone poles and light posts next to the freeway. There's nothing normal about that. They've acclimated themselves because right next to the freeway, there's not many predators and there are a lot of rodents to eat. And so it's like, hey, if I'm sitting right here, if I get used to all this commotion, I have a buffet right in front of me that I'm not being competed with. You're not having a lot of cats and raccoons crossing the freeway to get to it. 
So it's all theirs. And we can do that as well, that same principle. There's ways to come up with and find ways to get your bird to feel that you, if you are there, that those other things are not safe. If you are a constant in their life, a presence like, oh, I never got eaten with this person here, then that translates over. You become a steady presence. You psychologically become sort of a safety zone. And so if they're, they're with you, and there's a loud bang or something spooky happens, it's not as spooky. They might bait and get back up or they might just look at it. Where if they were out perched and you weren't around, they might have flipped out. Do everything you can, uh, even with even with touching them. I'm not an advocate of, of petting a bird too much, but I'll even take just a feather, which is softer, and get them used to you know being touched all over because it's really helpful when you're putting on equipment or if you're coping a beak. Most of my birds are so um, so socialized that most of my birds, I can, with a Dremel, I can file and cope and sharpen their talons or their beak without having to bind them, wrap them in a towel or anything. Most of them I can be like, oh, got somebody else holding the jesses and I'm going to do the beak and just trim and I can just do that. And they're okay with it. Even some of them unhooded, which that's great. Now, that doesn't mean that's the right way, but brainstorm ways that you can get your bird used to things, used to unusual scenarios, anything you can do to get them to think from, from cars to people to dogs and cats to horses to whatever, anything that you can think of. It's just simply ease them into it and then do it often so that it's not just a one-time, ah, something scary happened. The more they have that happen, the better they are. And again, there's principles like that with other animals, from dogs and cats to horses to parrots that we do regularly and nobody thinks anything of it. And for some reason, it's largely absent from falconry. There are uh, falconry techniques that touch on that, like hooding. You'd be like, oh, am I hooding a bird or am I hood training a bird? I have a video on that too, right? Where it's like, okay, the more that you um, acclimate them to it, just being in front of their face. Look, the hood's in front of your face and I didn't put it on and you're okay. It didn't attack you. Okay, and then eventually you have it on their head, but don't pull the drawstrings. Don't strike the braces. You just, you just get used to it being it on for a couple seconds. I take it off. That is acclimation to where they're used to it. Oh, he just might randomly put it on without pulling the braces and it's okay. That is dipping your feet in the waters of acclimation. Or my spiral and stomp, that's one small facet of that principle. Uh, you see, I, I've mentioned in my videos all the time, just bring your bird in, put out a tarp, and just put them there and watch a documentary. Go watch your favorite TV show. Turn on Star Wars, I don't care. Whatever you wanna watch, just like sit there with your bird. They're like, oh, well, okay, I'm full. We're not hunting. Okay, I would just be sitting in my mew with absolutely no visual stimulation other than what I see out the window of my mew. Like, okay, there's a fence and some trees, maybe a sparrow flies by. But instead, I'm with this dude and we're watching TV. People are walking in and out of the house. Oh, well, that is, that is acclimation. That is the principle of acclimation. Getting them so social, so used to you, but so used to the unknown by having easing them into the unknown and then having the unknown replay with regularity. They become rock solid, amazing birds. So uh, if you want me to do any specific videos on a specific form of acclimation, let me know. But I would love to hear uh, all you falconers out there share down what techniques you have liked to do to get acclimation to be rock solid and what ways that you've pioneered. And if you have any questions or areas you think that we could try that are new, I would love to hear. I always love new ideas in falconry. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And as always, happy hawking.